it just makes it a little bit more fun in the midst of ick. Well-behaved women seldom make history. I just want to play baseball. <laughs> Hi there, welcome to The Global Good. I'm your host, Shelley Steves, here to bring you inspiring stories from right across the country. This week, it's all about inspiring Canadians, from women who are finding joy in creativity, even in the face of battling cancer, to two young Canadians who are realizing their dreams. Now, first up, no question, going through a cancer battle is a scary journey. But as Susan Hay tells us, one Canadian woman is inspiring joy in others going through the same battle through art. And so it begins. At 57, Leslie Kunsi knows how to fight. She's currently battling her second round of breast cancer in five years. In dealing with some gallbladder issues, they've accidentally stumbled across the fact that I have cancer again. This time it's a more aggressive cancer. This time around, Leslie is taking on cancer with a whole new look and with the help of her family and longtime friends. Hey, it's paint day. She asked me to paint her head, and I thought, hmm, interesting, but why not? She said that she had found a paint that was a body paint, actually, it's like a makeup, but it's water-based and very safe, and I thought, well, let's give it a shot and try. It's more me, it's more outgoing, and it's kind of a way to help when you meet people. It breaks the ice, and to me, that's a big thing. If I've walked into an elevator and I don't have my head painted, their eyes hit the ground or little kids are more frightened by you know, the person who's different. Whereas if you're with colors, it makes it so that you can talk about the art and then you can actually bring up the cancer. Her goal is to share with other cancer patients that there is a positive way to approach whatever life throws at you. It just makes it a little bit more fun in the midst of it also makes me feel good because I can do something for her. I can't fix her, but I can paint her head. You feel like you're making a difference in some way? I hope. It's, um... To me, that would be important, is to know that I made a difference, maybe in another cancer pa patient's life. Now to another inspiring woman in BC who just so happens to be the mother of, yes, Canada's own Brian Adams, and he calls her the legend. Squire Barnes now tells us why. Jane Clark is a poet, a painter, an artist, but most of all, she's a lover of life who likes to live in some ways by this motto. Well-behaved women seldom make history. And being 91 years old, she also doesn't believe in the constraints of age. There's an expectation for every, every period in one's life that we're supposed to meet. I don't like meeting them. She wanted to revisit glaciers she had painted in northern BC 25 years before to see how they had changed. And she did it despite suffering a stroke that damaged the left side of her body. If I made up my mind to do something, that's what's going to be. And stroke was something I just had to overcome. In one hand is not enough, you know, and I can't borrow somebody's left hand, so, so I have to do whatever I can do with this. Her life as an artist began back in England during the dark days of World War II. After the war, Jane made her way to Canada, which for an artist was inspiration at every turn. Just magic for me. Oh, I mean, the land itself, I, I will, will never forget that feeling of, of the expanse and beauty of it. She raised two sons in Canada, Bruce and his older brother, Brian Adams, who summed up his mother perfectly 10 years ago after she had painted a mural in North Vancouver. My mother is known in the family as the legend. My brother and I call her, where's the legend? Oh, she's around somewhere. I I think I've got a number of years yet to go and I intend to live them. And if I live them and have to die in a place like that, well, I'm blessed, so it's okay. 
Well, she raises rock stars and is an amazing artist. What an inspiration. Now we head off to New Brunswick, where a young man with cerebral palsy recently realized his dream to stand for the national anthem at his team's game. He hopes it'll become a tradition. Oh, Canada. It was quite the moment. For the first time, 23-year-old Brent DeBorn, born with cerebral palsy, was able to stand for the national anthem at a Wildcats game on Sunday, and with one of his favorite players, no less. And I got to stand with Dylan Seitz for the anthem, so that just m made my day. It was incredible um, to see him doing something that he's been wanting to do for years. The moment was made possible with the use of this trial standing wheelchair on loan to the family. This one has to be returned soon. But his mother is trying to raise funds to buy her son the $50,000 chair, which she says will greatly improve his quality of life. Allow the hockey fan to stand on his own two feet for the anthem at every game. Family and friends have already managed to raise $15,000 to help Brent get a chair. His mother says the loving support of the community has been overwhelming. Well, in keeping with the sports theme, we head off now to Whitby, where an eight-year-old baseball player is being recognized for her impressive skills, and not just here in Canada. Aaron Streck has the story. I just want to play baseball. That message, along with this video of her making a series of diving catches, has made an impression on millions of people around the world. We've got top plays for you. We're going to start with number 10 just today, though, and this is awesome. So much so that Ashlyn Jolliker has cracked SportsCenter's iconic top 10 plays list in the U.S. Play on. It's really cool. Like, all of it is, like, really cool. <laughs> ESPN was in Whitby to celebrate and honor the 8-year-old's achievement. I didn't expect any of this to happen, but here it is happening. This is how she is when we, when I work with her or she's at team practice or games. Just loves it. Didn't expect anything so big like this and, uh, you know, for the mayor and everybody to show up. Just an amazing day. Something she'll never forget. Ashlyn's name was printed on baseballs, batting helmets and bats. We are so proud of you. She was also given an outstanding achievement medal from the town. It's a pretty special honor. I've seen, I've seen it all year, so I, I, I'm not that surprised, but uh, it's, it's, it's pretty special. We all get told we should be playing softball, and seeing that a young girl like her is playing baseball, it's a great message for those girls that are involved in the sport and want to continue to play the sport as well. Well, that's all for this edition of The Global Good. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to send us your good news story ideas from right across the country. And subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that share button and help us share some smiles. After all, it's for the global good. Till next time, keep smiling.